What's going on, everybody? This is Nick from House of Paint 203, bringing you the Merid series. Uh, the Merid, not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, is a genie, um, a water genie, essentially. It is an elemental uh, character uh, out of the Monster Manual. Um, but before we get started, just a friendly reminder to smite like and slam subscribe, a new feature that you might be seeing in these videos or um, if you're a first time watcher, uh, viewer I should say, uh, you'll notice in the right hand corner of the video, in the bottom right hand corner of the video, there is a little beholder and you can just click on that beholder and you'll be able to subscribe to the channel right away. Also follow me on my Instagram page at house underscore of underscore paint. The handle is right there for you. The O in of is actually a zero. So just uh, note that. And we are going to get started on the Merid. Okay, so as a base coat on the Merid's cloth undershirt here, I'm going to be using a mixture of black, heavy brown, and bone white. I want to bring this up to... Um, eventually look white-ish, um, but in order to get those kind of, that kind of depth effect on his cloths, um, I'm going a few shades darker. Made sure I thinned the paint out in the palette so that I'm not putting globs of paint on. And I'm just hitting everything that can be considered this shirt I'm using a number two brush. So I might have to switch for some hard to reach places to my zero. There we have it, and now I think what I'll do next is go into his coat. Okay, so for his coat, I've taken some frost blue, and I've mixed it with a little black and a little heavy blue to create these, um, kind of the, the darker base that I'm gonna want in the shadows of his coat. Is wearing a blue coat. So, blue coat stops right at that kind of lip here. Okay, so there we have it on um, the main portion of the jacket. I'm not gonna go right into the edge cut right there just yet. I'm actually gonna start going into his, um, his flesh. And what I'm doing with the flesh is I'm just gonna be going with a, um, a straight up German camo, dark green from Vallejo model color. And I'm gonna be pretty much getting everything except um, his lips, because I want his lips to be a, a different shade of green.
All right, so there's just base coat of the German camo green for now. The face, the hands, the frills on the back. Um, and now I think what I'll do is move into his uh, cuffs and his, his the cuffs on his shoulders and the um, the edge of his jacket. All right, going in on the edge of his jacket here, uh, just taking some heavy red and mixed it with just a hint of black. And I'm just gonna go straight up. All right, there we go. Bases are looking good. I'm gonna go here into the, the cuffs and then see if there's anywhere that we've done that needs um, a little bit of a second coat. For his cuffs, I'm gonna be going in with some heavy black green. Do this all over the cuffs and I'll catch up with you when that is complete. Okay, there we have it, his puffs. And now to round out the basing on the main figure, I'm actually gonna be using a Rhinox hide on his strap and on his pouch. I think it's time to go in and start firing up some mid-tones. Okay, going back to the sleeves, I've added some more bone white to my mixture. And I am gonna be using this as a mid-tone on the Merid's cloth shirt. Gonna be really covering probably 95% of the cloth shirt with this mix, leaving only the base coat in those deeper recesses. technique I'm using here is called stippling so it's more so instead of long fluid brush strokes it is mostly um, kind of just systematic dabbing at the at the model sleeves here.
Okay. Give that a little while to dry and see if um, there's anywhere else that needs to be touched up with it. And then we'll move on to the next uh, mid-tone. Okay, moving on to the jacket, the blue portion of the jacket. Same idea here as with the cloth undercoat. I'm gonna be giving him a mix of heavy blue and frost blue. The base coat consists of a mix of heavy blue, black, and frost blue. In this case, I'm gonna be just painting over majority of the raised areas. Leaving the darker blue in the recesses. Go ahead and do the same thing on the other side, and I'll show you when I'm done. Okay, moving in here to the heavy red. Start off on the, on the edges. This coat. Gone ahead and added some desert yellow to the German camo. Um, and I'm gonna start kind of meshing this in down on his uh, the lower portion of his mouth, and I'm just kind of tracing over the ridges. mouth area so the the model itself um, is very um, nicely textured
touch up his frills. Mid-tones are looking pretty good. Time to get his puffs. All right, so I'm gonna show you on one sleeve uh, what I'm gonna be doing here. And I'll show you on the sleeve without the um, trident because I'm gonna have to kind of finagle my way around in there. But what I've done is I've taken some heavy green. I'm sorry, some um, heavy black green. And I mixed it with a little white. And I've gotten this kind of uh, minty looking uh, this minty looking color here which is pretty cool so um, highlighting up around that area right there and then I'm actually reinforcing it on the bottom lips of the curve while the paint is still wet with a little of um, heavy black green by itself, just to emphasize that curve a little bit more. Right here, since this is really the only portion of the puff that's exposed, I'll highlight it right there. Turning it over. into that heavy black green. sleeve and I'll catch up with you when that's complete. I have to get in here and what can potentially be my max highlight on the Merid's flesh. I've added some more yellow, uh, desert yellow to the mixture that I had before. I'm going to hit these center areas. the corner of his eyes. It's also worth mentioning here that I also added um, some heavy brown to his eyes just to give me kind of like a point of reference. Like what's going on with his eyes right there?
with the sleeves. Next order of business, I've added just a touch of white to the heavy red. I'm going to be outlining the edges of the Merid's coat. Now going in on his coat with um, some pure frost blue. I'm really just grabbing the folds in the coat, the, the upper ridges of the folds. Sort of business on his shirt, just want to take some pure bone white, kind of just highlight these creases right here. Taking a little more white to mix with this. Black Heavy black green. Put in some little points of light on the front facing puffs of his jacket here. All right, I'm gonna move into his pouch and then we'll touch up that trident and his belt. Before the mid-tone on the pouch, I've mixed a little bit of leather brown with the Rhinox hide. I'm gonna be applying it to not the entirety of the pouch, but majority of the upper areas here just kind of leaving this this lip between the the material and the edge um, and that rhinox hide that just as a max highlight I'm gonna go in with pure leather brown making sure I hit that edge Yeah, that looks when it dries.
Going into his belt, I'm going to be doing the same thing on the trident here. I want to kind of go in with um, a non-metallic metal. So what I've done is similar to my Thanos series. Um, if you haven't checked that out, I use the same kind of color scheme in that series. Um, what I'm doing is uh, I'm using a mix of Mornfang Brown and Desert Yellow. For the, um, for the kind of goldish looking belt that the Merid does wear. Gonna let that dry just a touch. While that's drying, I'm gonna go up on the trident and do the same thing. Definitely gonna need another coat. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply a few more coats to the um, to the trident, and we'll see what the belt how the belt looks. Um, but I'll let you know how many coats I use. And the reason why I'm gonna have to apply a at least two or three is because again the paint is very dry and very diluted. I'm taking some pure desert yellow. I'm just outlined the belt and I'm just stippling around on the belt area here. And throw in some more thing by itself. see what a little of this minty green kind of looks like in here as well. Forcing with this desert yellow. Now, after adding some white to the desert yellow mix, I'm carefully going to kind of edge the belt. I'm also going to edge the jewel setting here. Kind of looks like a goldish belt. Okay. okay, so this is three coats of the uh, Mornfang Desert Yellow mix. Um, and now 
taking a little desert yellow, a little white, and just a touch of Morn Fang, and I'm gonna start roughing out where I want the um, the gold portions to be. So I'm gonna be going here. Right along the side like that. I'm definitely making sure to get the edge. So in order to, um, the most important thing when doing a um, non-metallic metal is establishing contrast. So contrast is really gonna make these areas pop. So taking some Rhinox hide here and going right along the bottom edge. to the to the gold mix here We're having added some white to the desert yellow Dress those edges. And now, for the fun part, we're gonna give it a glaze. of sun yellow and glaze is a very very um, watered down pigment it's used to kind of tint something that you're working on It'll also work to blend the 
those colors together. Now when it dries, I'm gonna go back in and um, outline one last time. Um, then we'll work on the remainder of the of the static. I'm gonna go in here now that it's a little bit dry. Gonna hit these edges one last time. the wrapping around his trident here I'm gonna give it a base coat of a little heavy brown okay while that's drying I'm gonna give the staff a base coat of heavy sienna. Wait for both of these to dry and then um, finish up this trident. All right, now that the heavy brown is dry, I actually went in and gave it a second coat. Now that it's dry, I'm going to be taking some khaki. Just really hitting the areas of each of the individual folds. Leaving that heavy brown in the recesses. And with the heavy sienna, lightening it up a little bit. Last couple orders of business. I'm gonna be hitting this or these um, shells on this coat. That one's gonna be more of a teal. This one's gonna be more of a pink. Give those a second to dry. While those are drying. Gonna go into the jewel on the belt with a heavy purple to start. And the next one with a little squid pink. portion of this diamond. Some amethyst purple. Same thing down here. For the next order of business here, I'm gonna be going into the clear effect and I'm gonna be 
be starting with um, some blue inks. This is the uh, water effect. Marid is coming out of the water. And now I'm going to kind of be weaving in some, some green ink as well. That is gonna take a little while to dry. When it does, we're gonna give it a little bit of a dry brush. While it is drying, I'm going to be making uh, this look kind of like sand on a beach. Um, so I'm gonna start off with a base coat of Mornfang Brown. there I'm starting on the base with some desert yellow give it that real sandy effect of marine teal would look like over the over the waves or over the ripples and the in the water so very carefully And the last thing that I would like to do is use a color shift metal for the fish on his belt. And the color shift metal that I'm going to be using on this is going to be Martian Green by Green Stuff World. Just has a nice little metallic kind of reflective scale effect down here on this fish. completed Merid. This one was a lot of fun. Um, and the second uh, genie that I've done on the channel, if you're interested in the Afridi, seri uh, the Afridi series, I did the Afridi several months back, so you can definitely find it. Um, you can definitely find it on my, in my library. Um, this one was definitely a lot of fun. Remember to follow me on Instagram, follow me um, on my other social media platforms. There'll be, um, posted for you at the end of the video. 
um, as will the information on how to follow Dominic Marriott of Credit UK and Mike Donnarumo of MVD Studios. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you for the next one.